Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Fabien Cousteau, and I believe in miracles. As some of you may know, my grandfather, Jacques-Yves Cousteau, was the original master of storytelling through the medium of television. He wove fantastic stories that spread around every corner of our planet, reaching hundreds of millions of people around the world before even the advent of Facebook and Twitter. The stories of these adventures enchanced generations and fell in love with the, the ocean world as a result. 20 years ago, he had the opportunity to speak to the Rio, 1992 Rio Earth Summit. During those six decades of exploration, he witnessed the drastic changes that were caused by one species. He also recognized the signs long ago and forewarned of the impending consequences of our fragile little blue planet to us if we did nothing. Citing such examples as overpopulations in the communities of Easter Island and Haiti. Referring to Dr. Borland, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate for his work at the, uh, uh, on GMOs, Jeek, as we like to call him, stated that such advances in food productions only delayed the results of the inevitable population monster. His speeches went on for several pages, which you can see up on this slide. And they were eye-opening with stories. Jeek's conclusion was simple. The spread of equal universal education and knowledge was the key to avoiding the plummet off the edge of our future. Today, his speech would have been just as pertinent. And I've even posted it on the front page of my personal website for anyone who's interested in reading it. I'd always known that my grandfather to be a cautious optimist, but with time running out at the end of his life, I also saw the frustrations of this world-renowned pioneer who had left a lot left to do. So why Rio Plus 20? Why Rio Social? I've been affected with the same passion and dedication of the two previous generations of my family. I'm here to continue in the fin steps and to be a voice, of course, for the oceans. Being the eldest grandchild of four, I'd had the unbelievably unique position and opportunity to spend a lot of time on expeditions, including several long tours of duty in the Amazon River Basin itself. Being the eldest grandchild, I also saw that, of course, human beings we think we invent everything. But take a look at the matriarchal society of orcas communicating with their intricate language patterns and dialects hundreds of miles from each other. Or the complex sign language of the octopus that flashes its colors and textures almost too fast for the HD camera to capture. These are just evidence that these inventions are simply mimics of nature. As a third generation explorer and filmmaker and founder of a nonprofit called Plant to Fish, I've grown frustrated with the lack of movements over the years. I'm here to carry on the message, of course, but I want to be able to do all that I can as an individual to make sure that we don't become a global Easter Island. I see human beings as a tree, and while we look up at the canopy to our decision makers as talks unfold at Rio Plus 20, with both outstretched hands and great cynicism, we wait for the fruits to fall. In doing so, we continually fail to acknowledge the importance of the roots down below. Those global communities who need the fertile soil to be healthy, how can we expect fruits from above if the roots below are not healthy? It is only with a strong trunk of communications between those roots and that canopy that we can expect the tree to bear any fruit whatsoever. Before computers were commonplace in the household, I remember my grandfather saying that he would only use one if it shrank to the size of his pen. And although he never got to see this, Jeek was a visionary. And when I was a little boy, 
He brought me one of the first homemade uh, computers called a Tandy TRS-80 Model 3, complete with cassette drive and 32K of RAM. I may be dating myself a little bit there. But he knew the importance of computers and what they would mean to our future generations to come. You know, in 1992, we were just over 5 billion people. Two decades have passed, and now we are bursting at the seams with over 7 billion. We're facing the same challenges today, of course, that we were then, only they've increased proportionally with population growth. This may seem like a sad story of failure, but now we have the not-so-secret weapon, connectivity. According to technology company Ericsson, there are now over 6 billion mobile phone subscribers, twice that of people on computers. That means that these citizens have voices, and they can connect with people halfway around the world, instantly. The year after the 1992 summit, Jeek drafted a long-form document called The Rights for Future Generations, which would be presented to the world leaders. By the end of 1993, he collected over six million physical signatures from around the world. Even to this day, this was quite a feat. Imagine what he could have achieved with access to social media and by using services like change.org or call to action. My little nonprofit, Plant a Fish, educates and engages local communities to restoring their aquatic backyard, to seeing our natural resources as a communal bank account and to start living off the interest. Using those social tools as Facebook and Twitter and all those things to communicate with the world, those little communities in El Salvador, in the Maldives, in Florida and other places are able to share their story of challenges and of success. You know, Facebook will be celebrating its five billionth customer this August. With fundraising platforms, little grass grassroots volunteer organizations such as Plant a Fish can raise over $25,000 in a week or two at most. With such platforms as CrowdRise and the Groupon Challenge. So do social media platforms work to create a better world? Well, I can only say this. In just one year, those small group communities, that network, that little network that we have, has planted over 34,000 mangroves, over 1 million oysters, and has released over 230,000 sea turtles. All this in just one year. And just being a grassroots movement. At the World Summit on Social Development in 1995, I pulled out an excerpt of what my grandfather had to say just two years before he passed away. He said this, I beg the leaders of the world to remember their promises at Rio. I beg the leaders of the world not to negate the hope they ignited for 1992. For to do so would be, feed, would be feeding the cynicism and distribute the distrust of government that is already starting to poison the well of democracy. Let this summit perhaps be our last chance in the decisive century to prove that the United Nations can catalyze truly global actions for global betterment. Let this summit generate results as if we were taking place in the very presence of generations whose interest is, it claims to protect. And let this summit finally be truly the people's summit so that this decade may be remembered as the one that indeed rescued the world. So often riddled with failures, our success. But no matter what the outcome at Rio Plus 20, never give up the fight for the rights of future generations to be able to enjoy what we've thus far taken for granted. Give people of the world a voice and they have power. Focus that human power and we can achieve anything. My name is Fabien Cousteau and I believe in miracles. Thank you.